Hi, this is Pastor Bob Yandian. With all the mess we see today in our society around us, how do we train and raise up a child in the way that he should go? It comes back to the Word of God. And God has put full responsibility on the parents. School's important, church is important, but the best thing is the parents raising them up in the way that God wants them to. Let's go to the Word of God today and find out how to have a blessed family. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and something to take notes with and study the Word of God with Pastor Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. Great to have you here today. I pastored in 1980. My wife and I took the church in 1980, had it up until 2013. And in the 1980s, there was a real problem happening with families at that time. And uh, there was a you know fundamental change going on with families and movies were reflecting it, things like that. What we're seeing today is just that on steroids is what I'm saying. But even back then, people were wanting to know about family. So I taught a series on family. And then from that wrote a book, it's called One Flesh. And this has to do with marriage, raising children. It's really more than just a book on marriage. It is One Flesh but it is dealing with much more than that. And so the book has been a great seller ever since that. I very rarely push it because I don't teach that much on family like I used to, but I'll tell you what, it's becoming a thing now. It has to be taught. So this is what we'll be offering at halftime on the program and you can get yourself a copy of it. And it's tell you it is, it was endorsed by Oral Roberts. So anyway, but here's the point, you know, uh, the word of God never changes. And uh, the word of God is always the same yesterday, today, and forever because the problems are always the same. Even though they seem worse today, they'll never get worse than the Bible is good to handle it. And so that's why I'm pushing the book and I'll be teaching today on what family is for. And today we've kind of lost that whole aspect. Parents don't really, they expect the school to raise their kids, the Sunday school to raise their kids, the church to raise their kids, even a Christian school to raise their kids. But raising a child comes back under the auspices of family and parents. So that's what we'll be studying today. Glad you're with us today. And uh, it's good to be with you. And you know, today as you're watching television, things like that, with all the things about gender and understanding your gender and children trying to change their gender, we're realizing just how dumb we have become uh, because of a lack of teaching on the Word of God. That doesn't even make common sense. You know, 40 some odd different, uh, you know, genetic makeups between a young man and a young woman, you know, and, and that's just not true. We know the Bible says God made them male and female. And yes, there are some men which have more feminine characteristics. There's also some women that have some more masculine characteristics, but they're still a man and a woman. And so we have that today that this been so stretched out beyond even recognition. Parents don't know what to do. They don't know even know where to begin. But it comes back to this about training and raising up a child in the things of God in the home. And the home is the main thing. Uh, this is the common complaint I get from people when I talk about raising up your children. They say, yes, but look how long they're in school every day. And then, you know, and, and then the church, they'll say, yeah, but they're only in the church for an hour. What am I supposed to do? Understand this, if they're in the school four or five hours a day, that means there's 20 hours that you have them at home. You always have more time with them. And on top of that, the, some of the classes we're discussing is one or two classes a day. They still have other classes on other subjects. So that teacher might have them for 40 minutes to an hour and, and trying to pump in the world's theology into them or the world's viewpoint onto them. But you have them at home and parents don't be afraid to ask your children what did you learn today what are you hearing today and be able to straighten that out from the word of god the word of god is the greatest book on training and raising up children and this is the book they had back in the book of deuteronomy uh, genesis and then exodus leviticus is all books discussing god's view on you know the creation all that but by the time you get to exodus and leviticus you're getting into the law and in the law, God showed them what he wanted and, and told that first generation. But the book of Deuteronomy, the name Deuteronomy means to say it again. And when, by the time you come to the book of Deuteronomy, it is the same teaching found in Exodus and Leviticus, but it is teaching taught to the children. That's why it's called to say it again, to teach it again. And so even though the same phrases are used, it's no longer God telling the people or the priest telling the people, it's the people raising up their children in the same ways. There has to be a repetition. And this is what often happens is there's a move of God, great things happen. 
Parents learn about it, but they don't train their children in it, and it's lost by the next generation. It needs to be taught and retaught and taught and retaught from generation to generation to keep it up. And so this is why, again, it still comes back to it. The Word of God says that parents are to train up their children in the way that they should go. Uh, turn with me to Genesis chapter 1. Let's take a look at verse 27. All this is to build into you parents a great faith and trust in God that what you know from him can be passed on to the children. In Genesis 1:27, here we have God speaking to Adam and to Eve. And he says in this verse, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. God blessed man and told him to remain blessed. Everything man does is supposed to be blessed, then increase and become a blessing to others. This is why we train up children at home, to follow after the ways of the parents who have followed after the ways of God. And by the way, their parents before them, if they were raised in a Christian home, passed down from generation to generation. And not only are they to be blessed, they're to increase in those blessings and then turn around and be a blessing to others, including their children, your grandchildren, which are yet to come. Unlike animals, man's family are supposed to be a blessing. Work is needed to raise a fruitful family like cultivating a fruitful tree. A fruitful tree needs sunlight, it needs water, it needs fertilizer, it needs pruning, and all this comes back to sunlight, water, and fertilizer are all a type of the presence and the Word of God being taught in it. Pruning comes back to the fact that children also need to be disciplined. Two things, they need the Word of God and understanding of it, but they also need discipline on the other side because they have the nature of the flesh and that tendency to want to leave mom and dad or to simply shake their heads and say, I don't think I believe it that way. You Keep coming back to it because, parents, it's not you that has the power. It's the Word that has the power. It's the Holy Spirit who has the power. And by fertilizing that tree with the Word of God, fertilizing your children with the Word of God, and then coming to the right time when discipline is necessary, you do it according to the Word of God. You do it because you love your children, and this is what pruning is all about. Proverbs 29 and verse 17 says this, correct your son and he will give you rest. I want you to notice the word will is future tense because I've had people tell you, I've corrected my son. I've done according to the Word of God. I've taught them the Word of God and he's still rebellious. This word he will give you rest is literally one day. He will one day give you rest. Yes, he will give, be a delight to your soul. I can't tell you how many parents I have said that to who are having problems with their children as teenagers, sleeping around, running around, getting drunk, things like that, like every one of the kids in school or most of the kids in school. And the parents said, why isn't it working? It's because they still are working on a rebellious streak. That flesh has ascendancy right now. And even though you've corrected them, even though you've taught them, keep on doing it. Don't back off from the truth because one day they're going to tell you, thank you, mom. Thank you, dad, for sticking to the truth because they're going to come to the end of their rope. They're going to come one day to the end of that and they're going to find out they still need what you had to say and they're going to return. Maybe sheepishly, they'll come back and apologize, but they're going to come back and tell you, mom and dad, you were right. What are you supposed to do, parents? Stick with the word. Stick with the word. Stick with the word. Keep training them up and showing them. And one day when they run into the same problems mom and dad did, which they laughed at one time, well, I'm not going to have that problem in my life. And one day they do. They're going to remember it's the word of God that brought you out. It's the word of God that's going to bring them out. I ask you this, have things really changed? Have times really changed? We we say that, we say, well, the world's never been this bad. Yes, it has. It's even been worse at times. We're not dealing here in our nation with, with things that Rome didn't come with and Ephesus and Corinth that worshiped false gods and had idolatry and, and sexual immorality was just part of the religion and part of life. And we see that happening today everywhere in television, all types of culture. But if it worked in Ephesus, it'll work in our country. If it worked in Rome, it'll work in our country. If it worked in Galatia, it'll work in our country. The same thing's coming back to it. The word of God is stronger than any opposition we have on earth. Romans chapter one, verse 28 through 30 says this. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those 
those things which are not convenient or proper or right. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy and murder and debate and deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things. Notice this next thing, disobedient to parents. Romans was written almost 19, 1800 years ago, the book was written. And the point of it is, is the problems I just read you are no different today than they were back then. Rebellion toward God brings these in, but the word of God back then was bigger than the problems. And listen, things have not got so bad that the word of God can't keep up with it. The word of God is still greater. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Second Timothy chapter three, verses one and two says this, know this also. Again, Timothy was the pastor of Ephesus. You want to find out about Ephesus, look at chapter 18, 19, 20 of the book of Acts. When Paul was there and a great revival broke out, they had witchcraft, they had idolatry, they had prostitution. All these things were legal and it was part of their worship. And Paul came in and brought the truth and great revival hit. And so it says again in 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 and 2, know this also that in the last days perilous times will come. We're living in those last days. Verse 2 goes on to say, for Men will be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. Notice the next one, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. Society has changed because of the actions, because of the new age we live in and the inventions and all the things we have, but the heart hasn't changed. You say, well, education has changed. No, it really hasn't. Education in those days was leading people off in the wrong direction, teaching the prostitution. All this was the correct thing. It's all part of man's appetite. Since God created us, it must be okay. Education has not changed that much and the things they're teaching have not changed. Oh yeah, there's some things that are coming out because again, the day we're living in, all the internet, all these things are much more available, but sin hasn't changed. The things they're promoting hasn't changed. The family hasn't changed. Knowledge has changed, but God's word has not changed and God's promised results have not changed either. So how do we raise a family? We raise a family by the word of God. You can turn to Deuteronomy chapter six. We're gonna take a look at verses four through 13, and we'll be covering this after we come back from the break. But all I'm trying to do here is simply say one thing, is don't give up on the word, don't give up on God, don't give up on your family. Say, but it seems like they've gone so far. Well, think back on your own life, how far you had gone before God got a hold of you. Some of you were not even saved in a church. You were saved outside the church, had not attended church or the church you went to didn't teach the truth of the word of God. And somehow the Holy Spirit and the presence of Jesus Christ has been greater. And in the midst of evil times, you have been raised up to understand the word of God. So have ministers been for years and years. In the midst of very bad times, evil times, ministers have risen up preaching the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If it worked in that day, if it worked in the Bible day, it works today also. I'll see you right after the break. Many couples marry with the mental image of fireworks and smooth sailing, only to discover that's not how things work. Marriage isn't as depicted in fiction, songs, or movies. Falling in love and living happily ever after requires a lot of hard work and give and take. Everything doesn't fall into place. Knowledge and willingness to work on it make a strong and secure marriage. If you will apply yourselves to wisdom and understanding, the end rewards are wonderful. One flesh will help you avoid some of the pitfalls. Even for those who have been married a long time and feel there is no hope of redeeming their marriage, it is never too late, and God will redeem the time. To order One Flesh, visit our website at bobyandian.com. Theology Simplified is a practical guide to foundational biblical truth. Basic doctrines are not difficult, but easy to understand. They often become disguised as complicated or deep-sounding words, but the definitions are simple. Pastor Bob makes complex theological concepts clear and practical. Eight crucial doctrines are demystified. Redemption, justification, sanctification, reconciliation, predestination, election, propitiation, and glorification. These eight precepts, essential for all believers to understand, come to light as you read and arrive at a deeper understanding of the finished work of Jesus Christ. 
To order Theology Simplified, visit our website at bobyandian.com. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership. While you're finding Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 13, God's instruction of parents to children, I want to read you a quick praise report. Margaret says, great teaching, Pastor Bob, on praying in tongues and speaking in tongues. Thank you. Well, Margaret, thank you for writing in and letting me know. And if, listen, if you'd love to write in to us, you can do it again by, as you're watching it, just, you know, type a message to us and let us know what a blessing it's been. And uh, again, when we have time, we read them and let people know how uh, that it's reaching out and blessing people and what, and what particular subjects have blessed people. I like to understand that. Well, Deuteronomy chapter six, again, we're discussing teaching to your children the things of God and that the word of God is greater than anything government can come up with, education can come up with, uh, new orders today. And listen, Satan doesn't have anything new. He just sticks a different title on it. Same problems, all right? The Bible even tells you whatever you're going through, you think it's so unique. No, someone else is. And many brethren and sisters around the world are going through the same problems you are. They just call it a different name in a different country and it throws you off for just a moment. I mean, how many names has communism gone by? It's socialism. Uh, we could go down the list of names that it's gone through, but it's still the same thing. It is man's pride rising up thinking he can be better than God and then enslaving everybody else at the same time. So let's talk about raising a family by the word of God. Don't get me off on all these other things. I could go on for a long time. But how about about raising a family in the midst of this generation, training them up that if Jesus doesn't come back for a few years, that they're going to be able to take over the next generation. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 through 13 tells us here that the book of Deuteronomy, which means to say it again, to teach it again, is a book about parents who learned in Exodus and Leviticus now teaching their children Deuteronomy. And the word means again to say it again. They're telling what they already know and passing it on to the next generation. So in Exodus, Leviticus, it was speaking the first generation. Now this is the second generation teaching the first generation. And here it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words, which I command you this day, will be in your heart. You will teach them diligently to your children and talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. You will bind them for a sign on your hand. There will be as frontlets between your eyes. You will write them on the post of your house and on your gates. And it will be when the Lord your God will have brought you into the land which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give your great and good cities, which you did not build, and houses full of good things, which you did not fill, and wells dug, which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees, which you did not plant. When you have eaten and you are full, then beware that you don't forget the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, and you will fear or reverence the Lord your God and serve him and will swear by his name." Matthew 6.33 says the same thing in its passage that overall this passage has said in the book of Deuteronomy. Seek first the kingdom of God. Put the word first and then all these other things will be added to you. Here it is telling parents to put in their children the word of God, the word of God, the word of God. It will be as frontlets in front of their eyes. They'll see it all day long. When they come home, it's on the post of the doors. And what it's simply saying is make the word of God the first thing your children hear in the morning the last thing they hear at night and they hear throughout the day. This is how the word of God will overcome what the world is teaching, what the world is saying, what education is saying. I'm all for putting your kids in Christian school if you can find one that's open, but if you absolutely cannot afford it, the prayer of faith still works. Send your kids to school, but when they get home, find out what they were taught and then look in the word of God and have your children understand that textbook is not the greatest thing. It's the word of God that is the greatest thing. The textbook is not the final word. God's word is the final word and bring them back to the word of God. Like I said, in the first part of this broadcast, the school has them four or five hours a day and many of the classes are having, that 
you're having real problems with is one class a day. You have them the rest of the time. And then the time you don't have them on Sunday or midweek night is when they are in church, part of a youth group, part of a children's church, and they're learning the word of God there. Make sure it's ever in front of their eyes, ever in their hearts and always to where they can begin to see it and understand it and begin to understand it and walk in it for the rest of their lives. Again, there's gonna be time periods. It seems like in every child, there's this rebellious time that comes along. Not every kid does that, but it seems like most of them do. But that's why it says train him up and raise him up in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he'll not depart from it. That's Proverbs chapter 22 and verse six. I want you to notice some things that came out of what we were just discussing there in the book of Deuteronomy. It says, when they walk, when they talk, when they rise up in the morning, that the word of God should always be there. And what it's simply saying is this, you know, when I, and back in the 1980s, because of the, like I said, there were some family problems back there, a real transition coming in society that had been building up from the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, it just seemed to splash. Great time of revival though, charismatic movement, a lot of great things going on during the 80s. And it was almost like God was compelling and showing his, the importance of the word of God while the world was trying to show the importance of education. And even though education contradicted the Bible, education came first. But no, the Bible comes first. And what it was simply saying was, in churches, what was being taught back then was you need to have a time, a daily time, where you have the Word of God and have a family devotion. Well, my wife and I, we couldn't understand that because we'd never seen that. I never saw that in the Word. I still can't find it in the Word of God that you need to sit down with your family and like have a small Bible study or a small church. If you do it, that's all right. That's wonderful. If you're if you're, you know, that's the way you see it and you want to plan your day around it, that is fine. But man, we were so busy. You know, the kids had sports. They had all these other things going. Things seemed to change day after day. But what we found from this passage of scripture is this, mingle the word of God in with everything that you do. Talk about the Lord when they wake up in the morning. Speak unto him around the breakfast table. Speak of him. And whenever the kids come home at the after going to school that day, bring up the word of God. Talk about it when you walk with your children, when you watch TV. TV. You know, we, listen, as the kids grew up, we, we allowed them to watch a few more things or a little more adult. But every time we did, we'd stop the television and talk about what they just said, the words they used, talk about the in, you know, the inferences that were built around what those parents were saying or the children were saying and warn the children about it. What did you see that was wrong? And after a while, they begin to tell us that's wrong, that's wrong, and could tell us the scriptures it came from. This is why it's important that it become a part of everything in your life, not a special set of the day where you talk about the word of God. The word of God is important when you wake up, when you, you know, when you're getting dressed, when you come home at the end of the day, when you've been out with your family, you use every occasion as an opportunity to present the Lord and make him a part of life, not just a certain section of life. Training children today affects their future. Proverbs 22, six again, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. I had people tell me, well, my child's in college and they're having the same problems the rest of the world. What am I supposed to do? I taught him the word of God. We had what you said, pastor. We taught it from the Bible. What's going on? How come things aren't working? I said, the Bible says when he's old. Doesn't say how old. It might be 24. It might be 26. It might be 30. But it simply says when he's old, he will not depart from it. There comes a time when that rope you had tied around their neck, which is the word of God, they run so far and they run to the end of it. And so this is the only way to raise up a child. The way by God's word. Notice this, train up a child in the way he should go, not a way. That you say, well, there's all kinds of choices around here. Different psychologists said this and that. The Bible says the word of God is the way he should go. And when he's old, he'll not depart from it. It's a parent's responsibility to train the children. The responsibility is not with the school to raise them. Here's the other part. The responsibility is not with the church to raise them. You say, yeah, but they were part of the youth group. And look what happened. You realize how much the youth group was an hour once a week. The school has them more than that, but here's the point. You have them more than the school or the church combined. They're your responsibility, and you can't back off that responsibility saying, well, I thought the school would do it. I thought the church would do it. No, the Bible is filled with it. 
parents train and raise up their children. Baby animals follow and learn from their parents. There's no such thing as animal school. Little deer don't go to deer school. Little cats don't go to cat school to learn how to be a cat. They simply follow mom and dad. They just follow right behind them. You've seen them. I, out by our house, we have, you know, times when there's deer co crossing the street and the mama co deer comes across and here comes the baby deer right behind it. And we have ducks that cross the street. Mama duck is out here in front, a whole line of ducks behind them. Baby animals follow their parents. Why is it different with parents of children? It's the same thing. And so again, like the ducks follow mama duck, then your little children should follow mom, and she becomes the trainer, the raiser of those children, the real one that raises them up, as well as the father himself when he comes home from work. They see the responsibilities they have, and they see the success of the family in front of them. Why? Because the word works. Sometimes children don't turn out well, even though they came from a good home, and so what you need to do is just wait for the seed to produce. When he is old, he'll not depart from it. Again, don't take the word old here at 60 or 70 years old. It just means older. Uh, the, when they're learning it, sometimes they don't want to hear it. It doesn't match up with what their friends are doing. They put their friends above their mom and dad, but there comes a day when they face the problems themselves and realize something, life hasn't changed. Problems haven't changed. It's the same this year as it was 50 years ago, 100 years ago, and they don't have old ways that don't work. The word of God is the way that I was trained in, so I will not depart from it. What is a child's responsibility? Ephesians chapter six, verses one through three. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Notice this, it says children obey your parents, but it says in the Lord. Because if mom and dad are asking the children to do something outside the word of God, they don't need to do it. No, this is talking about parents that love the children, love the Lord, and it says children, obey your parents in the Lord. This is right, this is correct. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. What is the promise? That it may be well with you. The root word for well means prosperous. What happens when you obey mom and dad? It becomes prosperous with you and you may live a long time on the earth. Children are not commanded to understand the word of God. Simply obey it and do what's right according to the word of God shown by the parents. Understanding comes later as they grow up. When I was raised in my family, my dad would correct me, my mom would show me the word of God, and there's times I thought, I don't like this, but you know what? As I got to the point where I became a teenager and later I began to see they were right. I do need to work, I do need to be responsible. And all of a sudden I begin to do that and things begin to work out in my life. Chapter six and verse four of Ephesians, the next verse says this, and fathers don't provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture, that's the discipline and admonition, that's the instruction of the word of God. What are children supposed to be taught? They're taught that the word of God will discipline them and the word of God will help them grow up and become responsible. Now there is a natural too uh, type of parenting here that's brought out and that is that the father is the one who disciplines them. But it's also bringing up this, understanding comes later as they grow up. And this is what the parent's responsibility is to do. And so today we have many single parents your life may be harder, but it's not impossible. Timothy was raised by a single mother and by his grandmother, and Titus had a believing mother and a sinner for a father. So again, it comes back to this, follow the word of God. I don't care what the circumstances are, God's word is greater. Be sure and get a copy of One Flesh. I'll see you next time. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. Visit bobyandian.com. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.